everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Savvy Cast. I am so glad that you're here today. I am super excited about my guest today. I have Leslie Register. She is a Birmingham local who I have come to know and absolutely love following her. And you're going to get so much out of this episode because she has authored one of my favorite cookbooks, but it's way more than a cookbook. It's a manual on being a fabulous entertainer and hostess. But Leslie, I want to thank you for taking time to be on the SavvyCast today. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. This is such a fun thing to do on a dreary day. Oh, I know. Well, for those of you who may not know, Leslie does live in Birmingham. And Leslie, you worked for how many years at Southern Living? That's, I think, Drew. I was there from 1989 to 1998 as a senior stylist on staff. And then I freelanced for 20-something years after that with all the other publications like Oxmoor House and, and Cooking Light and all of their, you know, different magazines and special interest publications. Now, what specifically did you do at Southern Living? I was the senior photo stylist, which is um, the prop stylist. I did not cook the food. We had eight people in the test kitchen that prepared all the foods, and I was responsible for everything in the picture but the food. So all of the propping, the linens, the flowers, the locations, everything you see but the food. And I worked closely with the editors in the test kitchen to make it all look as pretty as we could. Let me just start out where everyone will know. I discovered you when I bought your book, Leslie's Party Diaries, and I'm going to hold it up. For those of you watching the video, you'll be able to see that I've taken off the cover, which I do of every book. I never keep book covers and it's still beautiful. It's embossed. But Leslie, when I found this book, I think I found it at Gus Mayer. Did did they sell your? Yeah, I had a book signing there in the beginning uh when it first came out. Found it, started looking through it, bought it immediately. And literally, now I read cookbooks in bed. This is one I still refer to. And it again, it's more than a cookbook. Tell everyone what this book encompasses, why you wrote it. Just tell us a little bit about it because I absolutely love it. Well, I had the idea when I wasn't doing as much freelance and I really missed all the photo styling and all all of that. But then I realized I'd grown up in a house full of wonderful cooks. My grandmother was a wonderful mm-hmm. cook. My mom entertained beautifully. And I um, had a lot of recipes to share. And I just wanted to document them and leave something for my girls to have with everything, all of our favorite, most tried and true crowd pleasers that are easy and elegant at the same time. And so I started working on it. It took me over a year. And I would just pick a recipe or two a week and photograph them in my kitchen or living room at my house on my iPhone. So you did every picture in this book on your iPhone? Yes, except in the back of the book, there's about 30 parties. And some of the old um, parties (sighs) are snapshots that are not on the iPhone. But all of the food pictures are new and shot on my iPhone. They're absolutely beautiful. And one thing I love about your book is that you have documented parties that you've had for your girls and for friends over the years. So it really is just a guide to entertaining life, parties, events. And I just absolutely love it. And can we just start at the very beginning of the book? I love this page, 10 Things I Can't Party Without. (laughs) And I'm laughing so hard because you're getting a blowout from Chris, (laughs) who I love. And because one of your things... (laughs) <laughs> oh, isn't he the best? Um, but I'm laughing because this is obviously a while back. But th- uh, we're speaking of Chris Presley, who owns French Soho, and he's done your hair a lot longer than he's done mine. So that's the number one thing on your list of 10 things you can't party without. Number one is a blowout. And Leslie, that's one of mine, too. I will never have a party where I'm not having my hair done like the day before or the day of. But how long ago was this? Because that picture was probably taken during when I was working on the book about four years ago. But okay. um, in his um, friend's older home. location. Yeah. yeah. I've been going to him for probably 24 or 25 years. He was at A&W, which is next door to the Continental Bakery when I first started going to him. And um, mm-hmm. I didn't, I think I had not even had Lily yet. So 
I, I know she's 23. So we've been, yeah. going, we've been friends for a long time. He's a great person and friend and hairstylist. He's awesome. And tell everyone why that's number one on your list. It's just one less thing to worry about when you're having a dinner party and you can get the bathroom kind of stick and span and dry mm-hmm. off everything, put out fresh towels, and you're not doing all that at the last minute. It just is one thing, you know, less to do and your hair looks good and it'll probably hold up longer. And I should have yeah. had one today. But <laughs> no, well, I my hair doesn't do well in this weather. It's not ideal. I- yeah, well, no, I'm all about, and not only do I try to get a blowout. Now, I'm not talking about like just when a small group comes over or just friends, but like a big party, like a holiday or a big event. Not only do I get a blowout, I take the dog to get a blowout, <laughs> to get a groom <laughs> and a fly. Everybody's got to be clean and I don't want to have to be doing it. So number two is good wine. How would you define good wine just for a, a really nice party? Is it a red, a white, a rosé, or do you match your wine? I've gone through several. I now love Chianti. I love a chilled Chianti, but I just find one I really like that I drink that doesn't give me a headache, that Mm -hmm. not too over the top expensive. It's just, Mm -hmm. you know, I like what I like. I'm probably very particular about my wine. When I have a party, I like to have everything because a lot of people like different things. Mm -hmm. And I like to, especially if they're close friends and I know what they like, I will always have what they like because that's not fun to go to a party and not have anything you like to drink. Sure, sure. Okay, now number three, sterling silver. Do you still, even with post-COVID and things changing, is that still on your list of? Oh, yes. I I have it at the apartment. I have the candelabras out for Thanksgiving at my little temporary apartment and my china and my silver. I love sterling silver. I just really dress as that and I would have the girls over for Sunday night. I always pull out the silver for that. Everyone just likes it. It's just sort of a memory. My mom just keeps hers in, in her drawer and uses it every day. So that, That's wonderful. So if you don't have sterling, what's the next best thing? Just nice flatware that... Just something you like. There's so many uh, really cool patterns out now. I mean, I just think anything. I mean... Anything but plastic is good, <laughs> probably. Right. And, and just, napkins, I always use those. Okay. that I was going to ask you about the napkins. I know that you should always use cloth napkins. I have not found the perfect one that I do not have to iron. Does it exist? Um, probably because, not. Okay. Uh, but, occasionally, like a heavy-duty one that comes out of the dryer pretty decent, but it's kind of wrinkly, supposed to be sort of wrinkly, Mm -hmm. but I I have a really good iron and I can iron them all really fast. So, yeah. So if you're going to do the cloth napkins, just resign yourself to the fact that you're going to have to iron them. So probably, but I also buy like Amazon has these bistro linens that have a cute little stripe down the middle and they're like a pack of 12 for $12. I mean, I use those almost every weeknight. Just they're not, you're not that worried about them. You know, it's not yeah. Easy to iron too. Right. Do yeah. you use napkin holders with your napkins or do you just fold um, them? Not every time, no. I have some silver ones, but I don't really have a lot of napkin rings. I just fold them and put them yeah. under the silver or to the side or on the plate. Okay. Candles. And I'm a I'm a big candle girl. What is your favorite candle or do you put them everywhere or just in certain places? I like unscented, you know, both. Yeah. I'm going to have them a lot of places and maybe one pretty candle with the scent that I like. I like those red currant. I don't know. It really brings anything to life. I put it on the coffee table. I like candles everywhere when I have people over. It just livens it up. Okay. Music. How do you determine what music you play? Is it the theme of the party or do you always just pick whatever strikes your mood? Because that's one thing Zane, my husband, he is always, he says, Jamie, we've got to get some music going in the background. And I don't really think about it, but I know it's important. So what what's your guideline for that? I just think anything is good. I, I really do not like walking in someone's house, especially if you're the first one to arrive mm-hmm. in the silence. It's just awkward. I mean, it makes yeah. conversation awkward. I think any background music, it doesn't need to be blaring, but it needs mm-hmm. to be heard. And once people get there, you probably don't even hear it much anyway because people are talking, but anything. I mean, I have some playlists of like 30 songs that I really like. Right. And then you said friends, of course, that's 
always important. But the last one, and I love this, you said your husband. And I have to say, my husband is a necessity at parties. He always rises to the occasion. So I, obviously yours does as well. He will actually, he will mop the floor right before everyone comes. Oh, wow. I mean, the house is already clean, but like the crumbs or whatever, but I like the scent of the lemon, whatever, the lemon pine saw. So right before people come, he'll just do a brush over for me and then get the ice together and just do a last you yeah, know, walk through. So what does John do for you the John, last minute? Pretty much. He goes big. He just goes big or goes home. He just will. He'll go get the wine. He loves to run to Costco. He loves a Costco run. I do not like oh, to run Costco. I love yeah. what comes from Costco, but I don't like <laughs> going to Costco. He yeah. can do it under an hour, like door to door. It's it's amazing. He's good at all the grilling and he likes to pick out the meat himself. He won't let me do it. Um, I'm usually the side dish kind of dessert person. So, so he's a big so. help. He loves to cook. So he's a, he likes to have people over and he's a huge help. That's awesome. Okay. Well, let's talk about some of your recipes. I want to start by asking you, what is your absolute favorite recipe that's in your book? I know you've got Okay, let me preface by saying Leslie's Party Diaries has how many recipes? It's the, the I think it's about 85. About 85. But then you also have about 80-ish recipes on your blog. And I'll link to all of this in the show notes. But it's... It's Dear Party Diaries. Dear Party so Diaries. My website is leslie'spartydiaries.com where you can order a book. And you can also mm -hmm. order a book from DearPartyDiary.com, but it was too complicated to mix them at this point with the online shopping and all that. Right. Well, I've got, I follow both. And two of my favorite recipes are actually from the Deer Party Diaries, the, the cranberry salsa. Oh, yeah. Which I absolutely love. And you allowed me to put it on the blog and Mimi's lasagna. And I just want to touch upon those, but from your cookbook leslie's party diaries what's your favorite probably the la gumbo or the bolognese sauce those two are really popular and i use those a ton when i entertain it's just can be made ahead and you can enjoy your company and everyone seems to like those two and ask for them over and over again i was just looking at both of those before we jumped on the gumbo looks amazing and it looks Fairly simple for a gumbo. Did you create that recipe or what? It looks fabulous. I um, adapted um, a recipe from a Southern Living employee that was from Lafayette, Louisiana. And I added the crab meat and the shrimp. Hers was only chicken and sausage. Mm -hmm. And hers had water and no chicken broth. And I've kind of just changed it up a little bit, but it's based on a traditional chicken and sausage gumbo. Well, I am planning to, to make that for sure. Okay, and then the other, tell us about the bolognese. I saw that as well. And it, I believe you said in your caption that that might be your ch choice for your last meal, the bolognese. I love pasta and I love pizza. Those are probably my two favorite things. I just love pasta and I think it's just satisfying and it's easy. You can make it in one pot. I'm not a big baker. So anything, I love anything in a soup pot, you know, like a Dutch oven. I, I love mm -hmm. making anything in one pot. I think everybody likes it. It's filling. It keeps. It almost gets better after a day or two. So it's something you can make in advance. Can you just clarify for the listeners how bolognese might is different from, say, spaghetti sauce with meat? or is well. It it has carrots in it, like chopped up, you know, mm -hmm. celery and onions, the three of those. It's got a little tomato paste. It's got wine. And the reason I was asking you, because yours looked fabulous, and I know it is fabulous. I made bolognese last week, and Zane, he said, this tastes different from your spaghetti sauce, you know, because that's what mm -hmm. he loves and expects. And I assumed that it was just the fact that it had the milk and it did have the carrots and all of that. But I thought it was great. Do you think some people just don't like that? Because it does have a different flavor. I don't it's really know how to flavor. describe it. It's got three different meats in it, not just ground beef. It's got the pancetta and mm -hmm. the ground pork and the ground beef in, in my recipe. So that gives it a little different taste in the wine. And it's just not as tomatoey, probably, maybe. Mm -hmm. 
vegetable. Okay, I'm going to try yours because I did not have the pork or the pancetta. I just had um, the ground beef. So that is probably, and it, it did have the wine. Of flavor. But... It's got a lot of flavor to it, but it's different. I mean, you have to like bolognese probably, but most people do. Okay, well, I just wanted, okay, to ask you a few things about being a good hostess whether it's a large scale party or just a small gathering of friends or a small group, what are some things that we can all do to just be a good hostess? Well, go the extra mile. I mean, I don't like to skimp when I'm having people over. I like to make them feel special, do place cards, do a specialty drink at the door. I just don't want it to look last minute. I want it to look mm-hmm. intentional and I want them to leave with a memory or a party favor or just something to talk about. If they have something to talk about the next day, then I've succeeded. So give me an example of, let's say we're having a holiday party. What would a party favor be like? I've done ornaments at the door. I've done some specialty cookies, you know, wrapped up by the door. The last holiday party I had was probably the last party I've had since, you know, COVID hit. Mm -hmm. We had a a Christmas party and we had we had let all the kids invite their friends and we had a few friends, but it was mostly our children. And we had a DJ. We had Mark Lindsay from WZZK and it was incredible. He lit up the house with lights. It was the most fun party Um, I've ever had in my life. And it was people were in karaoke. It was a blast. So it was before you moved out of your, your yes, home. Yes, it was before we moved and we had cups all printed up. We called it Club 208. And so those were party favors too. I usually do a cup or something for people to take home. Okay, that's fun. And you know what? I think during this time, I mean, we're in hard times right now. So I think thinking of ways to have fun with your people, with your friends, I think that's so important. And I love that idea. Now, you're in transition. You're, y'all are. Yeah, he doesn't Stopping get it. much space to have a DJ. He he's mm-hmm. tiny compared to like a band or something. Mm-hmm. He just sat in the corner and he was so good, and it, it was really the most fun party. But during COVID, we had didn't have a party, but we would have a couple friends over, and we just pulled all of our outdoor furniture to the backyard and spaced it out, and would pick up cheese plates from Dyron's and put it out, and we we did that. We we made the best of what we could do just to entertain ourselves. Well, Leslie. Just since we're on the topic of COVID and social distancing and the fact that some people are still nervous but will not go and have a dinner party or whatever, or they're a little fearful, how have you modified how you and how are you doing like jarcuterie? Are you doing smaller portions or how have you adapted your entertaining? Well, I'm just not having a lot of entertaining. I mean, I'm having like just family Mm -hmm. and simplified that. and. I've been out some to some restaurants and I feel like everyone's doing the best they can do and they were spaced mm-hmm. out. And mm-hmm. I want to support local restaurants because I want them to be mm-hmm. around when this is over. So um, John and I love to go out. That usually inspires me to cook. I saw something very unusual last weekend in Naples, Florida. This is a great tip. They had a buffet and they have the glove machine. And you wave your hand over it and it makes this little plastic glove expand well enough for your hand to go in. Then you served your like off the buffet with the plastic glove on. I was like, that's pretty ingenious. That is am- OK. Now I'm all about gloves. Anyone who's following me like all of these in your kitchen. Oh, my God. You- it didn't take up that much space. You just wave your hand over the motion sensor and it had a stack of them on there. Just like and just they're clear. It was pretty cool. Oh, my stars. You need to be on a machine after this. Oh, listen, listen. I love my gloves. In fact, I've got about probably 10 boxes left, boxes of 100 when COVID (laughs) hit. I was so afraid. I went to Publix one time and they were out of gloves, so I panicked. Mm -hmm. So I went on, I believe it was the warehouse, uh, restaurantwarehouse.com or one of those. And I ordered like three huge boxes of boxes of a hundred gloves. So I'm I'm set for life if you need gloves. But oh that leads me to in COVID. Um the things we did. I you were looking for yeast. Do you remember oh, yeah. that? Possible. I was just wanting to make bread because I had all this time on my hands. And then yeah. uh, so I happened to find some and you mailed yeah. it to me. That was mailed. so 
Well, I've made focaccia okay. bread. We made my my daughters and I made several different yeast breads because we were just wanting to do something that took all day. It was fun. Yeah. Well, that focaccia bread. I really wish that you would have a cooking class on how to make that. That bread is beautiful and. I believe you said it was easy on, when I saw it on the. You said easy. I had never made it in my life. That was the first time. It was really okay. easy. My daughter and I made it together, and so satisfying punching your finger down to get the little holes. That actually worked. It was fun. Well, I want I want to learn to make that. I think Samin Nasrat made that actual bread on one of on her one of her salt fat acid heats. Uh, so I'd seen it before, and then when I saw you make it, I was like, oh. I need to learn to make that. But OK, so making everyone feel special. And, you know, if you're having just a really casual gathering of friends, you can do that in many different ways. Just maybe serving something, you know, is their favorite or whatever. But what are some things that you would say to any hostess or host you should never do? I don't really think there is a big no-no. I think if you're having people over, you get credit for anything you're doing. So um, I was sort of thinking in the lines of food because someone said to me once, don't ever have fish as the main entree at a dinner party because so many people can't or don't like fish. And then I've also heard that about pork. Is there just a general rule of thumb as far as the food goes that you should try to avoid in that um, arena. I mean, I usually know my people that I'm inviting well enough mm-hmm. to know. And if I do, if I do have a bigger crowd, I'll have a variety. If I'm going to have a smoked salmon, I'll have chicken something. I'll, I try to have a variety that they'll like something, you know, if they're, but I don't really um, avoid foods, I don't think, but mm-hmm. I like to do something I think people are going to like. I mean, I call them crowd pleasers. So I will say I did read something that I thought was a, a great tip. You had under tips, brand new butter. Oh, my goodness. I love that <laughs> because haven't we all been to a, a party or, you know, a gathering where there's the, the half eaten stick of butter with toast crumbs on it? Yeah. So I love that. And it inspired me because I've had this book for over a year. When I read that, I went and bought a nicer butter butter tray, you know, with the with the lid, and then that has stuck with me because I probably served like a half a stick before. I always made sure there weren't toast crumbs, but I thought, you know what, that makes good sense. Just get a new stick of butter out. Well, That's, it just it, looks more appetizing, I think. Yeah. Another thing I really like to do, and I grew up, my mother always did this at special occasions. We had butter pat. So each person at their place has their own little butter pat at their place. And that's really a nice COVID tip, too. You can have your own and not, not worry about anything, you know, sharing it. Well, I love that you put under that topic, everyone loves butter. Don't <laughs> say, oh, I'm not going to put up. And isn't that true? And I love how you said when you're at a restaurant, the first thing you do is get that pad of butter and put it on saltines. That is me. Okay. And Leslie, I'm going to see something else that I learned from you. And I have started trying to do this. It's called one more glass. And you said, even if they say they do not want water, always serve your guests water. Mm-hmm. Because, and you said, even if they say they don't want it, they'll drink three glasses if you serve it to them. Now, I love that. And I did that. And one time I remember in particular, I had water glasses and the pitcher and I started, you know, with pouring everyone one. Almost everyone drank more than one glass. Where did you get that? Because that's something I never would have thought about. My mother did not serve a meal without water on the table, no matter what else you were drinking. We always had a water glass. I just grew up that way. And it's kind of a, like Thanksgiving at my parents' house. It's someone's job to fill the pitcher, go fill the water glasses. I mean, that was just something we always did. But it's nice to have one that will go in the dishwasher so you can just load them up really quick and don't do a tall stem or something that's a pain to wash. So you just do normal, medium-sized glasses and... Mm-hmm. Get a couple big bottles of like Fiji water or something, get them chilled in the refrigerator. If you do that, you can skip the ice. That's a that's a time saver because people like that water and it's cold and doesn't even need ice. It's kind of do European. You, 
Do you serve it from the Fiji container? I'll just pour it right before we sit down, you know, out of that and leave it on the table. Or if it's a pretty bottle, it's kind of a nice touch on the table. Feels like you're at a restaurant. Okay, now I have a question. Do you serve ice in the water or do you just serve chilled water? If it's tap water, I would serve ice, meaning Mm. just out of the tap. But you can also put tap water in a little carafe in the refrigerator, like in advance. And that works as well as like a bottled water too. Another thing that you mentioned that helped me, and I totally agree with, and I think it will help the listeners, is the salt and pepper. (laughs) (laughs) And even when I forget, and I don't, because I now try to collect, if I see a salt and pepper shaker that I like, I will buy it every time because I don't think you can have too many. No. If you entertain it all, anytime I don't have them out, by the time any of my gatherings start, somebody is in the kitchen asking for the salt and pepper. Yeah, it's kind of hard to refill and do all that when you're about to eat dinner. So I like to have it and I don't like to have to ask for it when I go out either. I like it to be there. So your tip was have have them fill, have them available and have them full before a party. That's just a great practical tip. I like to get anything like that done out of the way because it's just kind of a hectic thing to be doing when your meat's coming out and your side dishes and the bread and just check all that off the list ahead of time. Right. Okay. Let's talk about just a few of your favorite recipes. If you had to tell someone you're going to have a party and you want a crowd pleasing dish, make this, what, what would it be? Something that anyone could make that doesn't require a grill that they could just make in their kitchen. I mean, I think most people really like risotto. There's a tomato basil risotto in my cookbook that's so easy and it's great to do during the summer when the tomatoes are so good and you've got basil in the garden. Mm -hmm. That's like a great thing to do for a crowd. The horseradish um, twice baked potatoes can be made in advance and frozen and they're great with a steak and we make those all the time um, for friends and are they basically, in fact, I'm going to make those. Are they basically like a twice baked potato? But it is. It's a little the- smaller because you cut the potato in half instead of using the whole skin of a, you know, one potato to fill. Mm-hmm. So it makes a lot and it's just the perfect bite. You refill them with the horseradish and potato sour cream mixture and you can freeze them or you can bake them right then. And it goes great with the steak. Now, I will tell you one of your recipes. It's not in the cookbook. It's on your site and I'll link to it. It's actually on my website. You let me put your beautiful pictures with the recipe on the blog, Mamie's Famous Lasagna. Leslie, that is a really good dish. It should have been in the cookbook. I don't know why I didn't put it in the cookbook. I was thinking it wasn't going to photograph that pretty and it was going to, you know, what's going to be hard to work with. But um, we grew up having that and we still have it. We take it to Kentucky all the time. My mom has it. It feeds so many. It just, it's amazing how much it makes. It's like so few ingredients to serve that much. Well, it's lasagna, but it has egg noodles. And that, I love that. It's lighter than lasagna. Mm-hmm. It's easier the, to make and eat. You know? So much easier. And But it's every bit as flavorful. I mean, we served that at a small group once, which, of uh, small group of about 20 people. Literally, I I, may, I doubled it. There was not one bite left, not one. And I thought, okay, this will be on my list of crowd pleasing dishes because it's just, it, it's easy and it's delicious. So what else? Any other recipe that is in your cookbook? Now, I love the beef tenderloin recipe. I want to try that, but that's that's for the Johns. He's he's like a master yeah. at that. It turns out perfectly every time. Um, he always handles that dish. Another thing, this is a little more trouble, but it is the most popular thing I probably do when I have people over is making homemade pasta. It is such a treat Ooh. and it gives people something to do and watch. It's just it's really easy. And I have a new recipe that I've been using that was in Mimi Thorson's new cookbook, and it really is easy to roll out. It turns out well, and I have my little portable pasta machine here in the apartment. So now I'm impressed. I have heard that it's easy to make, but for some it's reason, two ingredients. Her recipe has two ingredients. It's like four eggs and three and a third cups flour, 
and that's it. So, so you mix things. it up and then then what you time? roll it out and I have an atlas like pasta just it clamps onto the counter and you just roll it out and cut it into fettuccine or angel hair. It's easy. So, so is the difference in when you make it homemade versus let's say the Checo <laughs> or, or yeah, I like is that. it that's my favorite kind though in the box. Yes. Is it really vast? Is the difference just amazing? It's just more tender. I feel like it's healthier. You think of all the protein and the eggs. Okay. What is your favorite easy weeknight meal? Just with you and John, y'all are in the transition. You're in an, an apartment. Do you have one meal that you make more than anything else during the week? We do a lot of airline chicken, like roasting an airline chicken breast in the oven with some vegetables. Now, can you t- clarify what an airline chicken breast is? It is a chicken breast with the drumstick is still attached. It's a breast with the bone with the drumstick. So I can only find them at the Piglet and Crestline now. I don't know where all they have them, but they don't have them at Greenwise, which I wish they'd get them at Greenwise. What's the significance? Because I don't ever see them on my side of town, really. How are they different? Why would you get an airline chicken breast as opposed to just a chicken breast? I don't know. I think they're smaller. A lot of chicken breasts are just so giant now. They're yeah. just like too big for me. I just, and I I really use chicken tenders most of the time anyway. If I'm using it to go in something, mm-hmm. I just feel like they're more tender than the chicken breasts have gotten really, really big. So you just do an airline chicken breast. How do you cook it and what do you put with it? Um, I might just roast it in like a La Creuset with some carrots mm-hmm. and onions or Sometimes we do like a seared pork chop with a salad and some easy vegetable Brussels or we try to eat light during the week. We go out a lot. I mean, we cook two or three nights a week and the rest we go out. I do want to ask you because you are, you're definitely a foodie and you're here in Birmingham. Give us some of your favorite places to eat and what do you get when you go? Do you get the same thing every time? Well, okay. I would say right now at the moment, my favorite restaurant to go to for the whole package, the dining, food, the everything would be Helen down on 2nd Avenue North. I've heard. Have you been? Uh, I've heard. And no, I have not. I've heard raves. How long it's has it been open? open? I think September. And this is embarrassing to say, but we went the other night and they brought us a glass of champagne when we sat down. We're like, we didn't order this. And they said, well, this is your 10th visit. <laughs> oh, my. Okay. Now, so, is this Chris Hastings? Who, um, who's the chef? No, this is um, from the, the chef from Spring House that came and opened the restaurant from down at the lake. We really enjoyed just the whole, the whole package, the whole dining. And I'm, it's cold right now to me and I want to be inside yeah. eating. But um, I, there's so many good restaurants in town now. But that whole street, 2nd Avenue North, um, we went to another fun place the other night. It's a little wine bar called Avini. It's next door to William McClure's um, art studio. And it's opened by um, Gray, who was the manager at Bottega, and Ashley, who managed Fun Fun, and they're engaged. And they've opened this wine bar, and they have light bites. They're open from 12 to 12 every day so you can kind of go there before or after like you're going to el barrio you're going across the street is boca which is the man who owns um you know bistro 218 it's his yes. other restaurant italian mm-hmm. it's really good i just yeah. feel like second avenue north is really fun now I, if i'm not mistaken zane's firm just got a new they bought a building and that their whole firm is there. And I want to say, I think he said they're right by Boca. So I think they're on that street. Oh. So I'm so glad to hear because he doesn't really know all the different places. Yeah, well, you can go to a beanie and get like a charcuterie. You can get lunch. They're doing salads. They don't have a full kitchen, which is how mm-hmm. they were able to open. But it is a beautiful spot with you can buy wine off the shelf like retail. Mm-hmm. Or they have a full bar too. So it's not just wine. But it's okay. a great spot before or after dinner. Um, we we really enjoyed that the other night. Okay, yeah. so all of these places are in the same. Okay, now I'm sure that you have your favorite at Highlands Bar and Grill. I mean, I know as long as you've lived here. That's oh, I love it. I miss it so much. I I grew up. Oh, are they, are they still not open again? Well, well, Fawn Fawn is open in the right. patio in Bottega mm-hmm. Cafe or. I think they're just like the, you know, all of Bottega's on the patio. 
Mm-hmm. So it's kind of a mixture of their cafe and their restaurant menu. But, but the Highlands thing indoors. Okay, I did not know Which that. They have heaters, and if it's not too cold, it's great. I I just think when these last cool snap, <laughs> I'm more of a I get cold sitting out. Well, I've just loved getting to hear about some of your favorites, whether it's your food or the restaurants and all of your tips. So can you just tell everyone how to follow you, find your recipes and just follow you on Instagram? Okay. Well, um, the best I'm doing most of my posting right now on Instagram and it's Leslie's Party Diaries. Um, and it's and- L-E-S-L-I-E-S. Yeah, P A R T Y and then diaries, D I A R I E S dot com. Mm-hmm. That's a good way to get a book, um, too. That's that's my website, but the Instagram is Leslie's Party Diaries. And um, I post on that mostly and share a lot of recipes if I can and trying mm-hmm. to use that as my main little source right now because I think people have less time. I'm doing the blog some, but it's there's it's still up and live. I'm just not using it as much. I just I need to get back to it. I just am not as computer savvy as Miss Family Savvy over here. Oh <laughs> no, well, I'm not nearly as savvy as you in my cooking or my photography, but I love following you on Instagram and your recipes on there are great. But I also encourage everyone to go to the Deer Party Diaries because I mean, some of those recipes, and you must at least go there for the cranberry salsa, Mm -hmm. which my family expects that now on Thanksgiving. It's so good. And for Mimi's lasagna. Yeah. Because that's that's a must. I want to say one more thing. Um, I'm. What I'm doing most of the time when I'm not doing the blog is I do all the recipes for Birmingham Home and Garden Magazine, which is in the back. If you, you know, see a copy, pick it up or you can go online. They um, I just I think January, February is out and there's a Valentine's menu that I was real excited about. And um, I'm working on March, April right now. We're doing a picnic with some salads and some really fun ideas for an outdoor picnic. So I work on that and that kind of seems to come around before I know it. So if you go online at BirminghamHomeAndGarden.com, you can go to entertaining and all the past issues or all the recipes are online too. And they're putting the Valentine ones online, I think right now, like today. Oh, I'll link to that for sure because everybody's thinking about that. Hopefully everybody that's a member of the botanical gardens gets a copy of the magazine. So it's a good, good source. Well, that's wonderful. Well, Leslie, thank you. Thank you so much for taking time to share with us today. And I appreciate it. And you enjoy the rest of your day. And I know you've got to get somewhere. So thanks, friend. (laughs)